I believe the enemies of us all has mankind in what I like to call a Hegelian hell. You have believers in a false perception of little white baby Jesus on one hand and atheists who oppose them on the other. You have those who oppose Christians and worship other gods on one foot and the UFO fit straddlers who want to believe we were created by aliens on the other foot. All of them oppose Christians and can't wait to rub some piping hot doo-doo all in their faces one way or another. But look, all the enemies are doing is pitting everyone against one common deceived foe, which only strengthens the deceived foe and dooms everyone at once in the end. Why does it strengthen the deceived foe? Because others will rationalize that if everyone, including known Satanists, are all against this deceived foe talking peace and love, the world's signs of the times will convince them the deceived foe is the real righteous people. Either side of the fence you fall on, there is a jackal that hasn't eaten for days ready to take you down. To prove my point, just look at how many people got religion and came to Jesus right after 9-11. Churches were chuck full of sinners. But wait, add into the equation, millions of, you know, let me say that again, millions of Christians and Muslims who also believe in one form or another, alien life created mankind and are awaiting the mothership connection. The Christians. In my book entitled, Why Do the Heathen Rage? I went through great lengths to expose the Mormon belief in light of Mitt Romney's presidential election bid. Here's another little nugget regarding Mormonism that should enhance my probability of correctness in this theory. According to Yahoo News under, Is Your Religion Ready to Meet E.T. slash Mormon Worlds? Quote, Mormon scripture clearly teaches that other inhabited worlds exist and that the, quote, the inhabitants thereof are begotten sons and daughters unto God. And that's in Doctrines and Covenants 76 and 24. The earth, however, is a favored world in Mormonism because Jesus, as understood by Mormons, lived and was resurrected only on earth. In addition, Mormon so-called intelligences can only achieve their own spiritual goals during their lives on earth, not during lifetimes on other worlds. Thus, for Mormons, the earth might not be the physical center of the universe, but it is the most favorite place in the universe. Such a view implies that all other worlds are, somehow, lesser worlds than earth. Example. They believe their God has many wives and the children that fight against Satan in the spiritual world. Those who are born in this world with white skin fought against Satan's army. And those who did not fight in the spiritual army against Satan, guess what color skin they were born with? <laughs> I'm serious. It's crazy, but it's also true. So as you can see, Millions of people who call themselves Christians not only believe in E.T., but also believe E.T. is a God that will come to help them. They are ripe for the picking as soon as whatever comes on the scene and says anything remotely similar to the sick, sad doctrine that they possess. But wait! Also in the above-mentioned book are details about a spiritual phenomenon spreading throughout the evangelical and apostolic denominations of Christianity as well. They are openly, now let me say that again, they are openly in touch with what they call spirit guides who instruct them on how to conduct their lives and promises them to return to earth to conquer the world. Now, if you look at YouTube uh, and just type in spirit guides or just Google spirit guides, you will find a plethora of people willing and able to teach you how to get in touch with some a being, an entity that who calls themselves your friend. And you can call them white baby Jesus. I mean, you can call them anything you want to. But what they say, that there's a password that you use and you pick it. 
But when you say that password, it's basically telling that entity that you are submitting to his will. And he comes in, man, you look at YouTube, there's whole churches. I mean, and these are storefront churches. These are the churches you pass on, on the highway every day. These are churches that your boss and your, your co-workers that they go to uh, who call themselves Christians. And I mean, they got the whole church in there just full of a spirit. Some of them be laughing out of the control. Some of them just thrashing all around on the room. Now, I know a lot of you want to think that that stuff ain't real. That's bullshit. It's real in today's time because these things are openly invoking these things in their services. And you can, if you look at it, you can see these things, entities hitting these people left and right. So uh, that's what the, what the Christians, I think I'm going to do a whole video on them. Um, Y'all's will, that's what I'll do. And I'll name exactly who these denominations are. Uh, what they're specific because you know everybody got a, 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 a click uh, a specific whatever like Creflo he's a what is he the, the debt relief he got a debt relief spirit and Bishop L. Long he not only has a little boy loving spirit but he, what he was relationships and all kind of you know you know what I'm talking about so these people have a different oh they call it gift yeah a different gift and sometimes you can get an anointing from a telephone <laughs> a telephone sometimes you can I mean it's just it's just crazy glory clouds uh, where this cloud just comes out of nowhere and fills the room man it's, it's crazy but these are the things that are going on all the time oh and what gets them to come back and know that it's true is the experience and you'll always hear them say it was an experience because something is actually hitting their ass something is actually oppressing them i ain't gonna say uh, possessing them but i'll say oppressed they come and go you know possession is it, there to stay until you can do something to get it out but it oppresses that whole room that whole church so but let's keep going let's dig with the muslims now let me let me, let me talk about my brothers, my, oh, my people. All right. Though I can talk about a huge black, the huge black rock every Muslim believed fell from heaven, my real beef is with the black Muslims. No, not because of the fact they reject the Torah and the Tanakh as a white man's book, yet follow another white man's religion. Yes, Muhammad was a pure Ottoman Turk, meaning he was a pure white boy. And seeing Turkey is, has the highest concentration of blue eyes in the world, he probably had them too. No, my beef is not with their belief that a double brain guy from the planet Nibiru created the white man. Now, I forgot what, they named, what his name was. Though the last example proves the nation of Islam believes in and are awaiting alien life. This still isn't with the meat of my beef. To my dismay, these cats are now in conjunction with and has embraced yet another white man's religion, Scientology. Before I break it down for you again, allow me to express my beliefs and let's see if the evidence bears it out. I believe each and every religion on earth are currently being visited or are showing some type of manifestation of something to its devoted believers. Why else would generation upon generation of people continue to believe the same thing if there wasn't some sort of manifestation of power, of power to the people, whether it be sparingly or by mass visitation? Mankind has become a show me the money, show me the proof type of society, and skeptics want to see the proof in the pudding. So whether it be through apparitions, visions, possessions, oppressions, or dreams, Something is making the common devotee stay true to the faith. Saying all that, check out what Farrakhan had to say about giving his and turning over his flock's power unto the beast. Notice by his own words, there was an apparent manifestation of power to the people in the room. This transcript was from YouTube, 
was, was from a YouTube video of Farrakhan talking to a group of uh, Nation of Islam delegates who had just finished a seminar conducted by the Scientology leaders. All right, here's a transcript. I found something that I know we need that would enable us to express the supreme wisdom that we already have, but it's like having a safe full of riches, but we lost the combination. So through Brother L. Ron Hubbard, we can open the wisdom that we have that we have and execute that wisdom in a way that Scientology would be proud of us and we of them. But we are not a people that hide our light. If we know that we gain something here, we are not a people, a type of people that are ungrateful for what we have received that has allowed us to be better than what we are. I believe that Master Farad knew that this meeting was going to take place like this. I don't know whether he met Brother L. Ron Hubbard or not, but I believe there was some contact. Scientists are like that. They meet in a small little groups and they talk about and they talk and when they share with one another little truths, they are expanded on. There is something here. He's talking about Scientology. That belongs to us. And L. Ron Hubbard was a man we were destined to meet at the proper time. So when you mentioned washing feet, I sat there with tears in my eyes because the greatest gift I could give you is to give you that which would make you know what you already are. He's talking about being gods. Think about what I'm saying. The greatest gift that I, that you could receive after the supreme wisdom is the technology that will allow you to manifest it. And that technology is here. I discovered it and I wanted you to see what I saw, hear what I heard, feel what I felt so that you wouldn't be timid or afraid of knowledge that will help us be ourselves. And so I invited you and I watched you relate to each other and I said, every believer in the nation need what you experienced in this week. Nobody can lead our nation until or unless they become clear. Now let me tell you what clear is. Clear is to rid yourself of the demon particles who were blown up by a bomb dropped into volcanoes. Hey, I'm just a messenger, guys. <laughs> I'm just a messenger. But let me continue. Are you with me? The crowd erupts. We have no school of theology. We just study the word and do the best we can. But the time is out for that. Everybody has to be qualified to have a position or post in the Nation of Islam. Master Farad said the Nation of Islam is all wise and does everything right and mistakes shall not exist in the nation. Meaning, they will be made, but you wipe them out by doing better. So I am grateful that you came. And now, as I see my time is coming, whatever that means to you, if I could leave you with a science and a technology that will open up the wisdom that you have, and then he mumbles some shit, I mean, excuse me, mumbles something, for years. But when you look at accomplishment, wisdom is known of its children. It's not what you say, it's what you can produce. So, I hope, as Brother Shane X said, that this is not an end. This is a beginning. I pray 
of a long and beautiful relationship. L. Ron Hubbard would be proud at this moment because as I sat listening to you, I said we need to go back to Chicago and set up a training center where we could bring all those who want to be a part of this mission into Chicago like they do at their Mecca in Florida and teach them and train them and then they will have the qualifications to do the job of the resurrection of our people. I got to go now, but I hope you all have a safe flight tomorrow. In fact, I think you will be flying without a plane. The people laugh in agreement. I can't wait to go home and go to work. And I can't wait until everyone who wants to labor in this cause to go through what you just went through this week. I'm just grateful. Example. What in the hell was that? His true message is masked within a plethora of broken phrases, just like the serpent. He says a snippet of this and switches to a snippet of that, and though the two have absolutely nothing in common, you somehow bridge the gap between the two because you truly want to believe what he is truly trying to say. As you can read, or as you heard, his followers experienced some type of manifestation of power. And that was all the evildoers needed to sway them to giving their power unto the beast. The white man isn't the devil anymore. And now is a brother who has given them the technology and science needed for black people to know who they truly are. <laughs> wow. I'm sorry, Pop, but I just got to say it. This sorry sucker of cock may a thousand camels shit in his path and his pain be legendary in hell. He was right about the scientists getting together and hashing out ideas. But so what? So do cult leaders, oligarchs, and world dictators. Did you notice him speaking of himself as though he was a messiah? Believe it or not, his inner circle actually called him father. How blasphemous is that? How on earth does he know when his time is up? Have the aliens already contact, contacted him and told him they were on their way to pick him up to the galactic ball? He is not leaving those people with crap except a bunch of lies, vanities, and things where there is no true profit. Why am I making such a big fuss, you ask? Because just like there are different types of angelic hosts, there are different kinds of demon spirits too. Mark 9 26 through 29. Quote, And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him, and he was as one dead, insomuch that many said, He is dead. But the Messiah took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was coming to the house, the disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast him out? And he said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. Example. So as you can see, demon spirits, legions, are specific and not just having many of them. They, are all, they all have a different characteristics that must be dealt with in a different and distinct way. If you can recall, the evil spirit that oppressed King Saul was rebuked with the sounds of the music of David before David became king. Now, are you starting to understand why it is so important to know about the differences between Satan, Lucifer, the dragon, and the devil? Just imagine how many different and distinct demons they unleashed upon the people and upon the world who have no earthly idea they are present in the first beginning, or don't know how to deal with them when they do know they're present. That would mean each and every common day hip hop rapper has a legion of demons lurking deep inside them. 
Surely they just got to have a spirit of rebellion, a spirit of envy, jealousy, lying, boasting, deviant, pride, masochistic, and a nanny nanny boo boo, I got riches and you just boo hoo. And most definitely a violent spirit. We know they are separate spirits because not everyone is violent, but they can be everything else we just named. Man, may the pestilence of gonorrhea fester unchecked in Farrakhan's gonads until they fall off and flies lay their eggs therein. Why am I still fussing, you ask? Because L. Ron Hubbard was a failed sci-fi writer who concocted the entire theology of Scientology as a comic book script. Because L. Ron Hubbard not only studied in the occult, but was actually handpicked to study under the biggest demon in the modern era who self-proclaimed himself the beast of the apocalypse. According to Wikipedia under L. Ron Hubbard slash occult involvement in Pasadena. Quote, in August 1945, Hubbard moved into a Pasadena mansion of John Jack Whiteside Parsons, a leading rocket propulsion researcher at the California Institute of Technology and a founder of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Parsons led a double life as an avid occultist and the themalite, themalite follower of the English ceremonial magician Alistair Crawley and leader of a lodge of Crawley's magical order Ordi Templi Orientis. He lent rooms in his house only to tenants who he spe specified should be atheists and those of a bohemian disposition. Hubbard befriended Parsons and soon became sexually involved with Parsons' 21-year-old girlfriend, Sarah Betty Northrup. Despite this, Parsons was very impressed with Hubbard and reported to Crawley, quote, Hubbard is a gentleman. He has red hair, green eyes, and is, and is honest and intelligent, and we have become great friends. He moved in with me about two months ago, and although Betty and I are still friendly, she has transferred her sexual affections to Ron. Although he has no formal training in magic, he has an extraordinary amount of experience and understanding in the field. From some of his experiences, I deducted that he is in con excuse me, he is in direct contact with some higher intelligence, possibly his guardian angel. He describes his angel as a beautiful winged woman with red hair whom he calls the Empress, and who has guided him through his life and saved him on many times. He is the most thelamic, the thelemic, that's it. He's the most thelemic person. I have ever met and is in complete accord with our own principles." End quote. Parsons and Hubbard collaborated on Babylon Working, that's B-A-B-A-L-O-N, that's the proper name of a demon, a sex magic ritual intended to summon an incarnation of Babylon, the supreme Thamelite goddess. It was undertaken over several nights in February and March 1946 in order to summon an elemental who would participate in further sex magic. As Richard Metzger describes it, quote, Parson used his slang magical wand to whip up a vortex of energy so the elemental would be summoned. Translated into plain English, Parsons jerked off in the name of spiritual advancement while Hubbard scanned the astral plane for signs and visions. The Church of Scientology has nevertheless acknowledged Hubbard's involvement in the Ordi Templi Orientis. A 1969 statement written by Hubbard himself said, Hubbard broke up black magic in America. L. Ron Hubbard was still an officer of the United States Navy because he was well known as a writer and philosopher and had friends amongst the physicists he was sent in the he was sent in to handle the situation 
he went to live at a house and investigated the black magic rites and the general situation and found them very bad. Example. The Church of Scientology says Hubbard was sent in by his fellow science fiction author Robert Heinlein, who was running an off-book intelligence operation for naval, naval intelligence at the time. So Hubbard was an atheist and a bohemian, huh? Which is a nonconformist, a free spirit, and a dropout. Here is the bad part about the entire situation. There is no way in hell Farrakhan didn't know all of this before he even talked to these people. Truly they are led by the same spirit. Another reason why I still fussing is because Scientology believes in an alien named Xenu. Yeah, that's what I said. Xenu. That came to Earth after a cosmic battle and moved all the demons around some volcanoes and dropped a bomb and blew it up. For this reason, everyone must go through a process to become clear from the demonic fallout particles that has attached themselves to all human beings. In essence, their entire doctrine is champagne wishes and caviar freaking dreams. I'm still fussing because, as you can read and see for yourself on YouTube, Farrakhan has made it mandatory for everyone who wants to be a part of his cult, <coughs> ah, excuse me, I mean his religion, to be touched by whatever spirit or thing that touched him. To further the affliction, he has started his own academy of intergalactic alchemy right in the heart of Chicago. I'm still fussing because not only is the white man not the devil anymore, and is now a brother that has been sent to teach and save black people, Farrakhan wants the white man to be proud of us and wants you to take pride in being grateful for whatever the white man gives you. Hey, wait a minute. Have I just been thrown back into slavery times? Should I be talking like this now? Should I be worried Mr. Charlie gonna get Mike Powell for so at me for looking him in the eyes? Should I immediately start dancing a jig when I hear a fiddle playing? Should I put a feather in my cap and long for the days of cock fighting like Chicken George? Yeah, he Oscar um, and Femme the white devil's asshole too. And that means he kissed it. And was grateful for doing it at that. On another note, but definitely within the same song, I got a question, gentle strangers. If we were created by an alien life form, why are they hiding? If they needed us to dig for natural resources, why did they come so far from their homeland to get it? If all of the universe is made up of the same material, like they say it is, they should have stayed in their own solar system and got whatever they needed. Oh, they don't need any more resources? I ask because they sure haven't been back to harvesting in the last 5,000 years. Oh, so you say they want to help us achieve Christ consciousness, huh? They have been saying that same thing for over 5,000 years, and we haven't heard of one person achieving it yet. If so, who is he and where the heck is he now? What? You become a god and then suddenly you turn snobbish? What you playing peekaboo for? When did they hatch this plan to help mankind achieve godhood anyway? It obviously wasn't the initial plan. What changed their minds? Why doesn't one of them manifest themselves and heal the sick, etc.? When one finally does come and do it, ask him what took him so damn long. What? You say they are waiting on us to have an open mind on their coming? Man... All it's going to take is one manifestation of power and the world's mind will get right and will open up like to their godhood like a scroll. Besides, they created us, remember? So those excuses don't hold water. Everyone and every person who claim to have achieved whatever are all dead as a doorknob right now. Each and every one of them are cowpokes on the Double D Ranch. Helena Blavatsky, the new age woman, dead and dusty. Elijah Muhammad, dead and dusty. L. Ron Hubbard, dead and dusty. 
any Hindu Swami, dead and dusty. 13 previous Dalai Lamas before this clown, dead and dusty. In fact, this Dalai Lama actually said he wanted to be the first to have his consciousness put into a computer, which is transhumanism. Alistair Crawley, you guessed it, dead and dusty. Malachi Z. York, in prison for the rest of his life. When asked why doesn't he dematerialize like he said he could do, his reply was the white man knew of his powers and made the prison walls out of material that blocks his ability. <laughs> Man, these jer these jerks ain't no god. <laughs> Man, these jerks ain't no god, and the only place they will be ascending to is the great white throne of judgment on judgment day, and it will be all descending from there. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Thank you for listening. Uh, look for the next one. Uh, this is in support of of uh, Satan versus the devil or whatever I I, I mean I don't know, but um, look for the next supporting video. <laughs> Have a good day.